Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Meets and Beats with your host, Tony and AJ. Episode four. Here we are. Dude, how many episodes do you think we're going to announce the episode number at the beginning of? Until we don't have them anymore, probably. (laughs) I mean, I figured we would probably just do like episode one, maybe episode two, but by now we should just be like in it, but no. I mean, I still don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah. Wait for the videos. Wait for the videos. Oh, it's going to get even more awkward. Oh. Cringy even, probably. Oh, dude, you think we're going to make one of those like cringiest moments of 2019 videos on YouTube? Quite possibly. That's when you know you made it. Man, if we make one of those, then our stuff will go viral, and we'll have a bigger audience, and maybe even some Patreons. Oh, man. Shout out to all our Patreons. Michael Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> dude. All right. This week, we are talking about sleeper cuts which are cuts of meat that you might not think are awesome because they're under the radar, but in fact, they are awesome and possibly cheap. Yeah, under the radar, tasty, delicious, great flavor. And if you've had them and they weren't good, you probably just didn't have them cooked properly. Yeah. If you want to learn how to cook them properly, check out all my YouTube videos in the kitchen with AJ. First shameless plug of the episode. Yes. I'm going to have to do a uh, uh, sleeper cuts in the kitchen episode all yeah. to itself. I was thinking about doing it with the first one on my list, which is um, the pork steak, which if you don't know what a pork steak is, I want you to push pause, drive to El Campo, go to Novak's Meat Market, ask for Steven, tell him that AJ sent you, and get you a pack of pork steaks. Have you done it yet? I'm yeah. waiting to hear what are you the grill. For? Yeah. This is probably, and I, we're probably going to just, I guess we might have peaked too soon in this episode because it's definitely the top of my list. It's probably somewhere near the top of your list too, I'm sure. But Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the pork steak. If you don't know what this is, it is the pork butt, the shoulder, the Boston butt, the money muscle out of pulled pork, right? So they take the butt and they slice it off like steak. So you got a bone in there, which is delicious. And I mean, it's probably the most tender, flavorful. It's got a lot of intramuscular fat marbling. Yes. And what you want uh, when you're pig. grilling. And so, cooking. yeah. Yeah. Super delicious. And they actually eat like a steak. They eat like a beef steak. Yeah. And, and if they're seasoned and, and grilled and cooked properly, I mean, I had, I had some people I cooked this for and they. Didn't know. They thought it was beef. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if it's a thing anywhere else or if it's just like a, a regional thing around here. But a lot of people that I know, they, they're they about it. Well, and pork steaks can be uh, done a few different ways. They don't have to be the, the butt, right? They can take the tenderloin and cut it into steaks. And then they also have the pork ribeyes that you can get. HEB sells those. I don't, I'm not sure exactly which cut that is. Yeah. But, the one uh, I'm talking about is called... the. I found it on the internet. It's called a blade steak as well. So if you know what a blade steak is, a shoulder blade. Yeah, so go to your local butcher if you're not anywhere near El Campo. You know, all of our listeners nationwide and internationally. Worldwide. Uh, Wide. Worldwide. Wide. Global. Wide. <laughs> go to your butcher, ask for a blade steak or a pork butt cut into steaks, and season it, grill it, and proceed to have your mind blown. Yeah, you're welcome, first of all. Yeah. Uh, I like doing mine sous vide. I did one the other day for Tony, and I think that was definitely my method of choice on these. Uh, but, man, just grilling it like a normal steak, hitting that uh, constant flip method, which is what I'm all about also. Yeah, grill them. I, I like grilling them. I like grilling them, and you got to make sure you give them a good rest, just like any other steak. Yes. Uh, the rest, obviously, is super important anytime you're grilling meats. Pro tip, don't cook it all the way. Cook it to 145 degrees. Leave it a little bit pink inside. Don't get scared. It will be the greatest, probably, experience that you've had that whole day. You know, the sous vide one you did was was quite delicious. I, You know, I'm old school train of thought. I still like the pork a little more on the medium well to well side. But, no. you know, <laughs> you did... You did convince me it's quite delicious. Yeah, I mean, I, if I you're going to go, like, appeal. if you're going to go 150 degrees, it's fine. But yeah, so I guess the FDA originally had it at like 165 degrees or something like that, uh, and then they lowered it to 145 degrees as long as it's a steak. Now you don't want to do like probably I don't know like 
ground pork like sausage or something yeah, medium yeah, rare for sausage. sure but uh like a steak it's good at 145 with sausage. A, yeah, yeah. yeah make sure you cook it all yeah no i don't want that i don't want that bleeding out under my taco uh but then you just got to let it rest so you got to let it rest for like i think 10 or 15 minutes or something uh, and then or for like five minutes whatever i don't know look it up but of course, that's well, the FDA. Maybe that's just what they want us to think. I don't yeah. know. Brainworms. And for those of the uh, those of you that don't know, a rest means that you put it in a container that is sealed and airtight for a period of time to let it absorb its own juices. Sometimes I just tin it with foil. Yeah, I just put it in a pan, wrap it up with foil, real tight, yeah. and good to go. Unless you have one of them resting pans. I don't even know what that is. And they sell a kit <laughs> at HEB. It's like a barbecue kit. If you and buy a barbecue pit at all, kit. A barbecue. That's what I. Thought. That's what I meant to say. But I probably got too excited because I was getting ready to roast it. If you buy a barbecue kit, I mean, I guess. I don't, what if I you're don't gifted know. the kit? Because I it. was gifted this okay. kit, and that's now I fine. use it for resting my meat, and it works great. <laughs> I, I love it. I love I'll it. take one. That's fine. Yeah, send it I think to you're our jealous PO box. Of my rest pan, bro. I'm definitely <laughs> jealous of your barbecue pit kit. <laughs> that was another tongue quote. Tongue, blah. Another tongue twister. I can't even say tongue twister. Wow. <laughs> that steak, Tony just made me a steak in his cast iron, and uh, it, it was delicious, and now it, I guess it's got me flustered. I don't know. Yeah, I had to show him that it can be done, and it can be done well. It can be done. Not so, cooked well. AJ is it yeah, well, definitely not cooked fantastic. well. No, yeah, AJ yeah. is definitely now a believer in the cast iron method of cooking. Boom. All right, moving on. What do you got? So I want to... I want to switch it up a little bit and talk about the hanger steak. Yes. So the hanger steak is, is it's like the butcher's cut. You know, it's not a very well-known cut of steak. It's usually less expensive. It's like at the very bottom of the breastplate, I think, whenever okay. they cut that. Yeah. And uh, it's like super flavorful, man. It's like, it's similar in taste to uh, bottom sirloin, which is another sleeper cut we'll get to later. But... Uh, Man, it's just flat out delicious. If you haven't had a hanger steak, get one, try it, send us a message, tell us how we changed your life. Yeah, take some pictures and post it in the comments. We want to see. I mean, we're posting a bunch of food pictures, so post yours, tag us, tell yeah, us what you Yeah, let us know you what did. y'all are cooking out there. We yeah. want to we want to see how y'all are throwing down. And if you got ideas for any of this or, or we're talking about any of these sleeper cuts that we missed, you know, let us know. Yeah, Maybe we'll cover it in a future know. episode. Because I'm all about saving that dollar. Exactly. So, you ain't got to spend a bunch of money to eat well. Yeah. So the hanger steak, they call that the butcher's cut, right? Yes, butcher's cut. Because it's the one that they would keep for themselves after yes. chopping everything. Yeah, up. they can get all the stuff they're going to sell, cut that off at the bottom, and nobody really, nobody really cries foul because they don't care about it. But the butchers know what's up. It's delicious. Comes out great. Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, that was like the original brisket, right? Like brisket was considered... Like trash, I guess, and yeah. given to the peasants and whatnot, and then they figured out that all you got to do is cook it for an really long time at a low temperature, and it's, it's crazy delicious. how some of the the best foods are the ones that the poor man was given and turned into a delicious food. Well, I mean, when you have no other choice, you yeah. really make some things like happen. Lobster, for example, lobster was a poor man's food. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they uh, used to give it all to the, the lower class workers because it was so readily available up in the upper northeast. Yeah, lobster used to be a poor man's thing. Dang, then they gentrified uh, it, huh? Yeah, then it got white people it, gentrified. Dude, they turned it into a Whole Foods with a Starbucks inside. And a food truck. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Same yeah. with the, like, gumbo was a poor man's food. Barbacoa oh, yeah, was a poor man's food. Tacos are a poor man's food. They I still mean, are because I'm poor. I love them. I mean, and a lot of your greatest crawfish was even another one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Crawfish are amazing. Yeah. So I know AJ doesn't feel the same. I but. just don't do any seafood really. Change my mind. <laughs> one day. <laughs> one day we will do that. Dude. So let's let's look at the next uh, sleeper cut. What are you going to jump to here? Um, I'm going to go with not necessarily a sleeper cut as far as like people sleep on it and say that it's not good when it really is good but the uh prime or the uh ribeye cap steak i Why feel like anybody it's, say that's not good. no it's not not that it's not good it's just that it's like not readily known about well yeah i mean most people know you can get a ribeye few people know that you can actually get just the cap off yeah. the ribeye as its own cut of steak not a whole lot of places have it so basically it's the Top part of the ribeye, which is called the spinalis, 
um, or the I don't know, whatever. Somebody Google we call it, it the cap. I don't we know call if it the there's cap, a specific dude. butcher name. If you're a butcher out there and you're offended by my lack of knowledge of these cuts, educate me. Yeah, please. <laughs> I mean, so I made a video about cooking a ribeye. And I was like, yeah, I think this thing's called the Spinalis something. And somebody like roasted me and they're like, well, actually, anyway. So, yeah, if you want to well, do that, Steve, hit me. Yeah, I'd <laughs> have you know. <laughs> hit me hit me in the comments and flame me. It's fine. Or whatever. I call it the cap. And so you can buy it by the pound. And it's like it almost looks like a fajita situation. It's like thin and long and narrow and uh, delicious. <laughs> thin and long and narrow. <laughs> and delicious. <laughs> Yeah, so you okay, so here's <laughs> here's the situation with that. You can't overcook it. You have to watch it. If somebody wants it medium, just make them leave your house. Or order them some chicken nuggets or something because well, the this thing, thing about a, a medium with a thin steak like that is it's going to get to medium eventually. It's going yeah. it, to cook itself to where it's Yeah, medium. you're you're yeah. you don't and it's expensive. Yeah. It's like I think 25 bucks a pound at least somewhere oh, wow. around there last time I got some that's how much it was. Uh, yeah, so don't overcook it because it's going to cook faster because I guess the fat content, it's mostly fat and it's it just turns into like buttery, decadent deliciousness. Yeah, yeah, that sounds sounds great. Yeah, so I'm going to do that again for sure. Probably but buttery, deca- decadent deliciousness. Yeah, I'm going to put that on a T-shirt. You didn't you didn't get <laughs> tongue twisted when you said that. I'm I know, proud of right? You. Something's wrong. <laughs> So yeah, man, I agree. The cap steak is definitely one of the lesser known delicious cuts of meat. Yeah, I um for sure salt and pepper only on that. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, you got to enjoy the meat for the meat. Yeah, there's a lot of flavor in there. You don't need to you don't need to church it up with anything. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I agree with that for sure. So I mean, speaking of lesser known expensive cuts of meat. Yes. Uh one of those that we might want to throw into the mix here is the petite flay. Yeah, this is something that I didn't even know existed until the other day. Um, I was watching this new YouTuber. Well, I guess he's not new. He's new to me. Uh, it's called Not Another Cooking Show. It's this cat out of New York. Uh, this dude like started as a photographer, videographer, and then like turned into a food stylist, and then he started getting his cooking game up. And now he's got like a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube cooking stuff. Anyway, so he took what's called the petite filet it's basically the bottom part of a tenderloin i didn't know that there was two tenderloins on a cow but apparently there is and yeah, it might be that little like when you when you get a full tenderloin which we may want to mention a full tenderloin as a sleeper cut definitely because, uh i mean we have a <coughs> our boss kurt shout out kurt he he does a full tenderloin in his traeger that is absolutely mind blowing yeah but i saw it Whenever, whenever they were getting it from the place, the meat market, I think, uh, and it looked like there was a little thin piece when they were, when they were cutting it out. Yeah, I guess so. It's just got to be what it it's is. It's like a little yeah. tag. I don't know. It's it's an extra tenderloin on the bottom of this tenderloin. Typically, they cut it off and use it for something else. The guy said, but um, yeah, it's basically four dollars a pound or five dollars a pound, the same as ground beef. And you can make a little medallion tenderloin steaks out of it. Sound like bacon wrapped deliciousness Dude, is what we need. Just make it happen. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna so, go get one as soon as possible. So if you're building out your uh, grocery list with all these sleeper cuts, please <laughs> call let us, us know. Also, we need call to us know. over, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll help you figure out how to cook it and yeah. throw down with it. Yeah. I mean, speaking of cheap cuts that are really good. Have you ever had a chuck eye steak? I have not. Man, it's it's very similar to a ribeye. HEB used to sell them all the time, but I don't see them there anymore. But man, if I was going in there with a budget and I wanted to eat a steak, I would buy a chuck eye steak every time. Because you can almost it's hard to tell the difference between that and a ribeye if it's cooked right. You just gotta slow cook it or No, I I used to do them in a the cast iron. Really? Yeah. Yeah, man. And it, it's 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 kind of like Similar, it's it's like a blend of a strip and a ribeye, if that makes any sense. Like the textures? Yeah, the texture. That sounds like the greatest thing ever because I love New York strip texture and I love yeah. ribeye flavor. Yeah, and it's like it's got both of them mixed in it somehow. I don't know. It's it's a really good cut for, and usually they're cheap. I mean, I, Do they I have them readily all the time or is it like a special? Not lately. Hmm. I mean, 
six years ago, they used to have them all the time. People and found out. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, people found out or they're using them for something else now. But, man, I used to buy them all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, that's definitely something if you spot it. Don't be scared to try a Chuck Eye steak. It's delicious. Well, I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? You spent five bucks. I mean, it's better spent than five going bucks to McDonald's. And you had a meal. Yeah. So. yeah. You got to eat it still. It's less than McDonald's. Yeah. You can't even get a cup of coffee that probably. I don't know. I don't drink coffee. Uh, if you go to Starbucks, $8 yeah. for That's a two times that we've mocha mentioned vente, them for free. Whatever the shit they use for their <laughs> naming conventions. Did you see the YouTube video or whatever video of them pouring their whatever medium into their large and it was like the exact same amount or their large not, into their medium <laughs> cup or something. I didn't see the one of Starbucks, but I saw one of like Applebee's where they did that with a beer. Oh, it was like the pint beer and the tall beer were basically the same pour. Dude, it sounds like that's a mainstream corporate business practice. Yeah, that's how you do it, though. Apparently, that's how you that's make ha- money. That's how you make money and fuck over everyone. That's I mean, it's Applebee's. Yeah. Yeah, cash in, <laughs> bro down. Yeah, uh, whatever. Get some appetizers. <laughs> so we've kind of centered around nothing but pork and steak, man. I I, I feel like I got to throw in some other meats for okay. sleeper cuts. I get down with gizzards, man. Dude, gizzards are a good cheap sleeper cut for chicken. Yeah, and like uh, I mean, I really only eat them fried. Yeah, I think that's the only way. That's the only way I've ever seen them. Yeah. Oh, I want to say that uh, Timmy Chan's does something. They would with like gizzards and onions, maybe sauteed or like yeah, I think, I, I or whatever. Say maybe or maybe it's some other part of the chicken. Maybe I'm wrong, but no, it sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> they probably but, throw like heart in there or something. Yeah, it's probably all the all the little yeah innards. But fried gizzards, I fuck with man. One time, one time, remember <laughs> we used to go to Jack's. Oh, and, uh, dude. You, you talked about it in one of the episodes how I always out Whataburger you. Yes. <laughs> and I got a chicken fried steak with gizzards as one of my sides. It's Gizzards are like a meal. I think that's where the uh, out Whataburger me started. Probably so. <laughs> I know that Chicken Express has, has them on the menu. Do like other restaurants have them on the menu readily? Probably around here a lot. I mean, chicken places do. Yeah. Southern places, probably. I, I mean, bet uh, K-Baby's got them. Oh, yeah. They definitely do. Yeah, K Babies has them, but you're also gonna pay five dollars for a cup of tea there. So, wow. I mean, if you're ready to go, drink water. I don't drink tea, so <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I just don't do it. <laughs> I mean, how can you call yourself a Southerner and you don't drink tea? I, first of all, I'm not a Southerner. I am a Texan. Oh, so Texans we are, are not, not Southerners? Southerners. Oh my gosh. Okay, we everyone, are our own nation. Everyone, please take note of this. Texans are not Southerners. We are Texans. We don't care. We distinguish about ourselves about being the South. Yeah, we are Texans. We are our own country, man. Our latitude is inconsequential to our being. Yeah, <laughs> dude. So, yeah, just stop. Just stop, please. We are Texas, <laughs> not the South. Well, even in Texas. Be that as it may, we still like gizzards. Yeah, so. I would say in the southern United States. So one I'll of take the, that. Yeah, southern United States. How yeah. about that? So one of the other sleeper cuts on here, it's kind of a West Coast thing, but it's good. And that's a tri-tip. Oh, man. It's more of a California thing, man. It's more of a SoCal thing. Yeah. You know, we do brisket. They do tri-tip. But um, I heard I've had there's some a, that's pretty delicious. I heard there's a restaurant in town that sells it. Oh, really? I don't want to disclose their name. Why not? <laughs> but I heard that they sell tri-tip. Inquiring uh, minds want to know. It's disguised as a brisket. Really? Yeah. Oh. If you look at their menu, it doesn't say brisket. It says beef. Oh, is it a? Uh, I'm just saying. A very well known barbecue establishment. I mean, yes. Oh. But yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I can't call them out because I haven't seen it done. But apparently, it is. And the last times that I've been there, their brisket doesn't taste or look like brisket. It looks like something else. But anyway, try tip. Delicious, cooked like a steak. Yeah, you do it like a prime rib, kind of medium yeah. rare. You cook it like a like a r- roast, really. I yeah. would say, uh, smoked to the 
what, 145? Probably 130. I don't know. 125, 130. On it. Yeah. But it's good. Because you got to right, sear it. It is some good shit. Yeah. If you didn't have to sear it, then, yeah, you could probably go like 135, somewhere around there. But if you're going to sear it off, you want to leave, leave some temperature to gain because then you got your carryover, especially with that big, thick chunk of meat. Yeah. It's going to carry over, cook, and probably go up another five, ten degrees or something. Man, what if they deep fried a tri tip? Oh, dude. You would definitely have to smoke it first or sous vide it or whatever. Or to get the internal temperature. Yeah. You, I don't think you could deep fry that thing into being done. I mean, in they the deep fry turkeys. Yeah. They deep fry a fucking 20 pound turkey and get it all the way done. Hmm. I mean,. It might be a thing. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to reconvene. <laughs> it sounds like some experiment is an find order. Find out and uh, reconvene, dude. Fried turkey, man. That's so probably good. a sleeper cut. I'm, I'm gonna go. Know. Yeah, it's, no. it's kind of hitting the mainstream lately. Yeah, but fried turkey is amazing. I it's would agree delicious. With that. Like I'm definitely about it. Not even just during like Thanksgiving. Yeah, like yeah, I would time. eat fried turkey any time. It's just you don't see it anywhere. Yeah. So anybody that owns a restaurant that might be listening, you might want to consider throwing fried turkey on the menu. Dude, barbecue place has just regular smoked turkey. Delicious. Oh, I love I love smoked turkey as well. Yeah, it's like the turkey breast, so obviously more readily available than like whole turkeys all the time. But dude, nice. I'm all about, and I I'm not a turkey fan, like like per se. I eat turkey once to three times a year. Yeah. Most likely, depending on depending on what's happening that year. But yeah. generally Christmas, Thanksgiving, and then I'm not gonna consider sliced turkey in the fucking deli <laughs> aisle eating turkey. I mean that's sandwiches. That's barely even uh, meat. I mean if I get a, a, a turkey sandwich at Subway, I'm not cons- I'm not counting that. <laughs> Dude, I had the greatest Subway experience of my life a few weeks ago. Maybe Are we talking about the ago. restaurant or did you go to New York and get a handy? No, no, I'm not not about the New York life okay. or okay. the Subway life. I'm talking about a sandwich. Cuz I didn't know that having a great experience in Subway were like It was not a, not even a possibility in my <laughs> brain, but we played this show in uh Eagle Lake, I think. East Bernard? No, Eagle Lake. I don't know. Yeah, Eagle Lake. And uh, so, like, we went and set up or whatever, and, like, we're chilling. We're, like, getting hungry. So we went down to Subway and grabbed a bite, and there was this dude in there that looked like he was freshly stoned, for sure. And I ordered a Caprese sandwich, which I didn't even know they had. This man put his entire pride into that sandwich. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, anytime you see somebody that's slightly stoned and they're putting their entire pride into any meal, wherever it may be, I can promise you that meal is probably delicious. <laughs> Dude, not only was it delicious, but it was like made with care and love. Like I could feel the love when I was eating it, man. Like he even like like he made a salad for somebody behind us and bro, he like put the salad in the bowl put all the ingredients in there, like mixed them up a little bit, then added more ingredients, mixed those up. Didn't just like throw it all in there and toss it around. So this like, dude took his job seriously. Yeah, he was a for sure sandwich artist. Shout out to the random Subway sandwich artist. Dude, like if he's not locked up I right now. I think there's now, a term for that. The guys that make sandwiches at Subway. They I, call them sandwich artists. Is it sandwich artist? Yeah. That's the term? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I thought there was like its own unique word or something. Some <laughs> like lingo. they made up a word? Yeah. Companies <laughs> do that all the time. Yeah, they do. I mean, <laughs> Kodak was a made up name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was random nerd fact nerd anyway fact. this sandwich was amazing and like everything was fresh in there i don't know like this subway just was obviously above and beyond oh huh. well, 10 out of 10 would recommend did you give it the proper yelp review you know what i actually created a yelp account just so i could give them a yelp review man that yeah. is one impactful sandwich dude changed my life here i am <laughs> two months later talking about it on the podcast man subway if you're listening I yeah. got a marketing budget. So. Hey man, hey, give that dude a raise. <laughs> give that like, guy a on raise. the for real. Send that motherfucker to college. Let him own his own subway. No shop. man, no, keep him there forever. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. keep him on the line. Yeah, we need like, him making sandwich. We need him making the product. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip on to my next one, uh, unless it's not time to go to the Picanha yet. 
No, we can we can jump to that because that one's like after the pork steak. Definitely my most under the radar steak that I've ever had in my life. Well, picanha and I really I really think this other one can kind of be talked about in the same conversation. But uh, the bottom sirloin, yes, uh, both of which they're amazing, flavorful, beefy cuts of meat. Like they're cheap. And if you don't cook them right, they're tough. If you don't season them right, eh, not yeah. as great. But they're like, they bring out a beef flavor like just about no other cut of steak you can get. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with the picanha, which you probably aren't because it's not common here in the United States. Yes. Uh, it is a Brazilian, um, I guess, delicacy. Like they call it the queen. Like they are all about it. Like this is the yes, cut of cuts. That's, that's the cut of Brazil. Yeah. So I I first learned about it from watching uh, a YouTube series from these guys called Sous Vide Everything. It's like Guga and they're Brazilian guys, and I think uh, Cuban also. Uh, some dudes. I think they're in Miami, and they just sous vide everything. And then there's like another offset. It's called uh, Guga Foods. It's one of the guys. Anyway, they are all about the picanha. And it's a rump cap, and they cut it into steaks with the grain. That's what makes it the picanha. Uh, and then they grill it up like steak, and then you cut it across the grain when you're ready to eat it. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, it's, like, flavorful and tender. Yeah, when I had it. Delicious. In, first time I had it was my birthday this year that I can recall. If I had had it prior to that, I don't, re- I don't remember knowing that's what I was eating. Yeah. But, man, yeah. That was definitely the thing to have. I feel like I would have known having that before in my life. Like, well, you know, I was once young and and dumb and idealistic, and I didn't I didn't register <laughs> everything that I went through in life. You yeah, know? I guess everybody has those periods. You know, I could have been eighteen eating some picanha somewhere, and I didn't know no different. Dude, you never know. I mean, it's Surfside. Yeah, <laughs> Surfside had me. <laughs> shout, shout out to all our B County listeners today. Yes. Shout out Brazoria County. <laughs> oh, man. So the Bicanha, the reason we saved it for last is to segue into our Meat Mecca, Meat of, the Mecca of the Month segment. Yes. This is our new segment, Meat Mecca of the Month. Meat Mecca of the, of the Month. Basically, this segment is either AJ or me or both of us pick an establishment that we went to and had our minds blown with the amount of greatness that was served. Yeah, basically, it's an excuse for me and Tony to go somewhere uh, and eat something crazy. It's basically we, just an excuse yeah, to go. As eat. if we needed another excuse yeah. to stuff ourselves and eat good food. I mean, basically, we're just using it using it as a, a write off for the podcast company. Yeah, I don't exactly. know if that's a thing or not. Well, it's fitting to be. Yeah, <laughs> we're about to do it. Uh, whoever does our books, uh, get ready because uh, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> So, so the first place that we went to was a Brazilian steakhouse for Tony's birthday uh, in Houston. Yeah, it was Avienda, I believe it was the name. Yeah, you nailed it. Nailed it? <laughs> Did I? Or was it was a way off. I think it's Avenida. Avenida? I believe so. Let me see. Hold on. Let's pull that up. <laughs> Tony, pull that up. Yeah, I mean, whatever it was called is a Brazilian steakhouse, Churrasqueria. Uh, you know, you've probably been to like Fogo de Chao or whatever. Whatever the other one is, uh, Texas Day Brazil. Yeah, so a Brazilian steakhouse, they come around with the skewers. They cut off whatever you want to eat to your plate. It is Avenida. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I crossed my E's and I's, apparently. Yeah, you, you did that. <laughs> you did that again. <laughs> but yeah, so they bring you however much you can eat and then more to your table. And it was yeah. a bit overwhelming at first because there's. Little uh, little dudes flying at you from every direction with skewers yeah. and like, would you like some of this? Would you like some of that? Yes, yeah, 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 sure. Next thing you know, you got a pile on your plate and you don't know which way to go. But man, that place was amazing. Yeah. So like the problem I think with us is that we got there kind of early and we were one of like two or three tables in the place. So anytime we wanted, you got to flip your little card over from red to green for them to bring you meat. Uh, anytime anyone flipped their card over. Like, since we were the only ones in the joint, everyone was there. Yeah. I mean, there was just, it was crazy. Yeah. There's like, and 15, even the salad bar there was crazy. There was yeah. like 50 items. Yeah. It was like a big old cheese block that was carved into a bowl out My of itself. My favorite part. Parmesan and, wheel. 
Yeah, the Parmesan wheel. Yeah, yeah. It was that was they had candied bacon. Yes. That was that was definitely delicious. And, yeah. Uh, the the picanha was great. The bottom sirloin was great there. Super flavorful. And the the filet, I really love the filet and the ribeye that they had. Yeah. I was a little disappointed in the Wagyu offering. Um, yeah. It was kind of hyped up when we came in, like, oh, we got Wagyu. You yeah. Know? That was but, the whole reason we went there. Yeah, that was one of the only reasons, because it was included in the menu. We're like, all right, we'll get some overprime steak. Yeah. Well, like, it was their, I guess they do a special, I don't know, every month or something. And this time it happened to be this Texas Wagyu, which they kept calling Kobe. Which yeah. I don't mean to be a stickler, but Kobe is only from the Kobe Japan. region. Yeah, like champagne in Japan. is only from southern France. Yeah, or whatever, so it wasn't know? necessarily yeah. Kobe. I mean, it, was it was Wagyu. It was Wagyu. I think it was New York Strip. It was, was Strip. The cut. Eh. And, eh. It's just, I mean, okay. Now, if I went somewhere and that was the only thing brought to me, I would have been like, oh my God, this thing is great. But the fact that there were 15 other cuts of meat that were brought to me that were even more spectacular. It, yeah, it, that didn't really give that one yeah, place to shine. Yeah, when we say it wasn't that great, it was in the hierarchy of all the other. Yeah, great like it was relative to had. everything that we had <laughs> on our table, which was a lot. Yeah, it was overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, so was, the I didn't even try the chicken. No, like I didn't waste time even trying the chicken. I didn't try the chicken or the sausage links. I didn't try that one either. I don't believe I tried the parmesan crusted. Those are pork one tenderloin. of my faves. Yeah, those were pretty good. Those that were, and the uh, the lamb. The lamb chop little uh, guy. I tried the lamb. I didn't like it. I didn't try it. It had a mint glaze, which I guess is a Mediterranean thing. Mm. And mint and the pork, I, I didn't care for that at all. I was yeah. actually excited to try the lamb because I don't, you know, I've only had lamb a couple of times. And that mint lamb combination was just not good for me. Yeah, they had a little cinnamon glazed pineapples. Now, those were great. Yeah. Yeah, those dude. were. If you aren't eating Special. pineapple with your steak in any form of fashion, you need to now, like, start now. Cause yeah, grilled pineapple. I mean, if you can make a butter cinnamon glaze to go over the top of it. Yeah, or just better. by itself. I like just to season the pineapples itself. with whatever seasoning I put on the steaks. And while the steaks are resting, I go and grill those up for four or five minutes. And then so you, like, do a couple bites of steak, and then you hit a little pineapple to cleanse the palate and refresh everything. Dude. Nice. It's like every bite of steak is your first bite of steak. Only thing with pineapple is you can't eat too much of it, you know, because there's something with pineapple that the acid in pineapple is actually trying to it's trying to eat you as you're eating it. I didn't even know that was a thing. It, it, it's a thing. It, it it'll make your uh, it'll make your gums and your tongue raw if you eat too much pineapple. Really? Yep. I ate a lot of it last night. Try eating like a, an entire one one time and see if you make it through. Oh, I don't think I could even do that. <laughs> I mean, I probably could try. <laughs> and, but, and as always, if I'm wrong and I'm an idiot, y'all call me out. Whatever. Hey, dude, this I is the care. internet. <laughs> you, can't, you are completely right no matter what you say. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, obviously, I try to come up with things on the fly as I'm talking about them and try to be as uh, accurate as I can. But, hey, everybody fucks up. No, not Tony Brooks, a.k.a. Tony Brooks. <laughs> Speaking of fucking up, I'm still on my Facebook man, everybody. Dude. In case, in oh case y'all didn't gosh. see the video of, of how I got on my Facebook man, then yeah, go check out our Yeah, re-listen to the last episode, and you can hear about Tony's Facebook ban. How many days deep are you right now? I think I'm on day 10, so I got another three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it said uh, 21 days or 22 days yesterday. Oh, I thought it was a month. It was 30 days oh, originally. Oh, 30 days total. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Are you looking at your fantasy football league right now? Uh, No. No. <laughs> I am trying to look up what we were talking about earlier about the pineapple <laughs> to see if I'm an idiot or not. <laughs> Tony is fact-checking himself for you people. I don't like doing retractions, man. Dude. Now, you know who needs to be fact-checked? <laughs> Presidential debates. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> How can you be allowed to lie to get the most important job in the planet? Like, I don't even want to lie on my resume about, like, having an extra minor degree or, like, something stupid, much less lying on my resume to become the president of the United States. The whole platform is just garbage, yeah. right? You give, you ask a super complex question, and you give them 30 seconds to respond. <laughs> yeah. It's Dude. like, how would you solve the world's energy crisis? 30 <laughs> seconds and go. 
Let me be clear. <laughs> I mean, if, if if you can solve the world's energy problems in 30 seconds, and maybe you deserve to be president, yeah. but nobody on those stages knows how to do that. Dude, like, <laughs> but, like, my big thing is, like, why are they allowed to lie up there? Like, everybody fact checks everything. You can do it in real time. Like, they could I have a whole team of people. That do that now. Yeah, but it's not, like, on the television screen as you're watching it. It's, like, no, on the internet later. the whole... The whole platform is broken, and it's meant to not bring out the best candidate and yeah. the one that's set up for real change. I mean, yeah. it's it's the wheel of distraction, man. It's just dude. another spoke in the wheel. Another spoke in the wheel, dude. Speaking of spokes in the wheel, our musical segment today is the new Post Malone album. What? You see how I brought that around? Like a wheel? Like a wheel. Like a wheel. I see what you did there. Yeah, I knew that if we didn't, that would have been our new tangent of the month, and we would have had to yeah, have don't, don't two me, tangents Don't get me too month. deep in politics. Captain Captain tangent. Tangent. Our audience doesn't need their mind blown by my politics. So yeah, the new Post Malone CD. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stay right out of the gate. I'm giving this one a for sure five out of five stars. Man, that's bold. Right out of the gate. You're giving it a better rating than the Tool album. Yeah, well... I mean, the Tool album was only three out of five. Yeah. I haven't listened to it one song since we reviewed it. You know, I, I like Post Malone as an artist. I'm not big on pop. It's not really my style of music, but he's kind of a little bit of an exception to the to the rule when it comes to pop stuff. I believe he's an actual artist. I believe he gives a shit about his craft, and I think that really came through on the album. I mean, he did a lot of different styles of music. He went from, from rap to doo-wop. To Dude. throw in some rock in there. He was everywhere. He was all over the place with yeah. that album. And he tied it all together pretty well. Yeah, I like mean, the underlying, like, I guess, trap beat kind of stuff that is popular with him. Yeah, I don't remember which track it was, but the one I'm listening to it, I'm like, man, that's got some doo-wop feel to it. Oh, you, you were know? talking about, uh, I think it's called Allergic. It's the one that kind of sounded like a Beach Boys song in the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, that one started out, like, kind of like, okay, go like those kind of bands. Yeah. And then like then it that little middle section of it had like the Beach Boys thing and then it goes like got some crazy corporations going on like I think that's probably the most musical I guess I don't want to call it pop cuz to me pop is like more mundane well, pop you know is repetitive popular stuff popular music yeah. I mean I Taylor Swift would be pop. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of pop artists that don't identify as pop, you yeah. know. But I don't know. I, I, I liked it. I don't know that I liked it as much as you did based on my my musical tastes. Uh, but you know, the first track right out of the gate was a it was a banger, man. It was nice. I liked it. Hollywood's bleeding, dude. Yes. So like, apparently, Post left L.A. and now lives in Utah to get away from the L.A underbelly the toxicity of la yeah, like, i mean la's got to be like extremely toxic for that level of so exhausting star, bro you know like everybody's fake nobody yeah. has their real intentions in mind and yeah yeah i couldn't imagine living that life yeah I, was, I know some people that have lived out there and you know they go back where they came from or you know move somewhere else and they're like yeah pretty much like within two seconds of meeting someone they're sizing you up trying to figure out what you can do for them and if you can't do anything for them they're out and then every handshake ends with like a business card wow yeah, yeah. it's like the fake it. like that's what all the songs are about if you really get into the lyrics of these they're like yeah. all talking about like enemies and on the road and like hollywood's bleeding like they're all talking about fake people and just being over it. Well, the, those themes are kind of prevalent through some of his other music too. I mean, it's it's kind of a recurring thing with his stuff, and that that's one of the things I I like about him. He, he tries to keep that keep those tones real, and he he does real artistry. I mean, like his stuff, you could tell he really is putting his heart and soul into it. I think. Yeah, man. The one that I think is probably my favorite is the one with Ozzy Osbourne and Travis Scott. What's oh, yeah, called? The, uh, <laughs> Take What You Want, yeah, I think. Yeah, Take What You Want. I should have known what it was called. Yeah, but the I like that the one quite a bit. The dog came into the room and it freaked me out. <laughs> I like that <laughs> one a quite a bit. in the room. Um, the one thing I didn't like about it was probably on the producer. I didn't like on the hook where they sped up Ozzy's voice. I, sh I felt like they should have let him 
he's been in this business in the music business for so long. You give that man his time to sing his natural progression of his, what of do his you mean? song. The the take what you want from me, the hook part, you can tell it's either auto tuned or sped up. It's not his natural tone of singing. The whole thing? The whole part Just where he's hook. singing? The hook part. The, the take what you want from me, take what you want from me? Yeah, the one that recurs throughout the song. If you listen to it, you can tell it's not naturally how Ozzy would sing. Oh, uh, I think what you're talking about is like there's not a gap between the first take what you want from me and the second take what you want from me. I, th- I felt like it sped up, man. Like, because there's other parts of the song where he's, the, I think, one or two other lines that he sings like normal all the yeah. way through, and you could tell by the by the tone that it was that's how he sings. But then when he gets to that, it they kind of sped it up to fit the the beat of the song. I mm-hmm. guess I don't know. I didn't hear that. Well, maybe I'm crazy. Probably. I mean, <laughs> I know I'm crazy. So I had to look up who was playing the guitar on that song because. I really wanted to know, and it was a sick guitar solo, and I was like, dude, like, who is this? And I thought it was going to be one of those situations like uh, Michael Jackson had Eddie Van Halen on uh, Thriller Mm -hmm. or Beat It or whatever. I don't know, that record. I thought it was one of those situations where they brought somebody in, but then I thought, man, maybe that's Zach Wilde. But no, it wasn't. It was apparently the guy, Watt, is the producer of this track, and he's the guy that played guitar on it. Really? Yeah, Yeah. I thought... I thought it was maybe a good guest spot for a guitar player there too. Yeah, no, it, I guess it was. I mean, he's the he's the guy that produced the track. He apparently hooked him up to. Oh, really? Like, I guess he was he played in a band with some guys from Black Sabbath and some guys from Led Zeppelin or something. I don't know. I read it real quick. Uh, he was he was in some bands with some dudes, and then I guess they did a did something with Ozzy and. Uh, he was friends with Post and was like, hey, dude, uh, Ozzy wants to FaceTime you. And so they like FaceTimed and then are like, you know, a little bit down the road, they figured out, hey, let's do a track. So nice. Yeah. I think it was like very uh, Mama, I'm coming home. Ozzy's yeah. delivery. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And then like, I like how it, it didn't get really rocking until the last part where the solo came in. Yeah. Yeah, it was, and I, they had what uh, Travis Scott in the track yeah, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they all did their individual thing, and like it didn't seem forced. No, yeah, it, was it was like like how Limp Biscuit should have been <laughs> combining rap, <laughs> rap and rock. How like Limp, Limp Biscuit should except have good. been <laughs> like no, but nobody hates them yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, when Nookie came out, it was a whole new thing, and every everybody at least in. Brazoria County was all about that. Well, that's not saying a lot. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not saying a lot, but I mean, he discovered Stained, right? So at least he's got that. He brought Aaron Lewis up. So now I hate Limp Bizkit for more than one reason. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't hate Limp Bizkit. I just, I mean, dude. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. I banged out some Limp Bizkit on my two twelves in the back seat of my Tacoma. Like. What 30-something-year-old male in America didn't... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Break stuff, dude. Yeah, I was going to bring that up, Break Stuff. Break yeah. Stuff made me wanted to go buy a whole pack of muscle shirts and like start drinking Natty Light. Didn't they do a track with the Wu-Tang Clan? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I can't back that up with facts. Uh, I'm pretty sure they did, yeah. Uh, Limp Bizkit, Wu-Tang Clan. But yeah. that's not what we're talking about today. That's not what we're talking about today. Uh, standout tracks for me. Uh, Hollywood's Bleeding, of course. Die for Me, that one was good with Halsey. I really like that one. Yeah. And then, of course, Take What You Want. I think that one's probably going to be the biggest one. Like, what's weird is that all these kids are like, Post Malone made Ozzy famous. And then all the old people are like, if you didn't know Ozzy before Post Malone, and then they just go at it on Twitter. Yeah. It's yeah. been pretty entertaining. We had the exact same standout tracks. I think I'll throw internet in there. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, I like the album. Uh, I, I I'm gonna go with another three star out of five just because I, you know, it's not my style, not my style of music. I, I'm sure I'll hear three or four of these tracks played on the radio to excess to where I'm tired of hearing them. <laughs> just uh, cram them down your throat, just like mainstream radio. They would does. never do that. They would but, never do that. You know, I, I liked it. It was good. Yeah. I don't know that I'll listen to the full album again, but I'll, I'll, I added a few of those to my playlist. Yeah, I think like. Uh that wow song at the end it was almost like 
he was like, dude, I need like a, a post Malone song. Yeah. Like Wow sounds like a post Malone song. Well, you know what's what's crazy is like it went from Wow on my uh Amazon music straight into uh Sunflower, his oh, other yeah. song. And I thought it was like, is Sunflower on that album? Like Yeah. <laughs> it it sounded like the rest of his Sunflower oh, it, is on that record. It is on that album. Yeah. Oh, well, then I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah. because You should have listened to the album we were reviewing today. Yeah, I sh- <laughs> well, I should have looked at the track list. Yeah. I, 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 like I know it from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, so yeah. I figured it was released as a single. It was, and then they put it on the album. Okay. I feel like that was the weakest song on the record. <laughs> I like that song. Uh, I always like that song. That was like the most poppy made-for-a-movie song, probably. Yeah. That was, I liked They're it. They're like, hey, y'all want to get rich? <laughs> hey, let me, let me show you how to make some money. <laughs> yeah, these oh, chords, man. this beat. Yeah, these lyrics. 120 beats per minute. It's like the universal pop song in the key of C. Apparently, also as what I was reading. So that's like the beginning of the formula. Well, the key of C actually is applicable in multiple industries of success. That's how a lot of people attain their success, especially on Wall Street. They're very big on the key of C. Yeah. I was reading that in the uh, Men Who Built America. Yeah. It was yeah. Like Carnegie and, and If you don't know Morgan. what I'm talking about, go watch Wolf of Wall Street, and you'll get what I'm talking about <laughs> when I say key of C. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, <tangent>. Sunflower <laughs> Captain <laughs> Tangent. I'm going to put the Captain Tangent sound clip right here. Uh, <laughs> Sunflower, I think, was my least likable track on here just because it was too Well, it's kind of played out. Too polished it's, up. It's played out. They play it on the radio, like, constantly. Uh, I, I watched Spider Man in the Spider Verse. I thought it was a good track back then. Mm, but I didn't watch that. Yeah, I was tired of hearing it on the radio all the Never time. Never heard it. I don't listen to the radio. So, I yeah. Wouldn't. Speaking of tired of hearing it, I heard Blanco Brown again. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> they played it on the halftime show of Thursday Night oh, Football why? the other day. Oh, it's just so awful. Get that guy off of my TV, out of my ears, in anywhere. Just t- send him out of America. Trump, can you deport him? <laughs> if, if you're listening to Send President him back Trump, where he came from, please apparently. Please deport him. <laughs> uh, he was probably born here. He's probably I'm a true blooded sure. American, yeah. but deport him nonetheless. Mm. Just for that song. But who's going to pay for that? Trump will pay for it. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to make someone else pay for it. <laughs> That's what he does. Yeah, he yeah. makes somebody else pay uh, for yeah, it. Yeah, then it's not. So. Which ends up being the American <laughs> people, apparently. Yeah. Dude, they're going to take away my AR-15. <laughs> Crazy. Hollywood's oh. bleeding. Um, yeah. F- five out of five for sure for me. Three out of five for you. I can see that. Um, you know, I can't come on here and rank it ahead of a Tool album. Just it, DNA wise. You roasted the Tool album. Because I held, I hold them in such high regard. Oh, so like I was their three out of five themselves. would be like five out of five for anyone else. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Something like that. Math. Something like that. Carry yeah. the one. Like uh, if I had I never heard of Tool before and I listened to that album, I probably would have gave it a five out of five. Yeah. But I hold Tool in such high regard that their standard I was is different. Their standard of judgment standard. is different. Yeah. No, I get it. And I'll feel the same way when the new Whiskey Meyer album drops because Dude. he's probably my favorite Texas country artist. And they're not Texas country anymore. They're considered Southern rock. I think. Or Red Dirt. No. No, they're not country. They're rock now. They're Southern rock. Oh, well, whatever you call yeah. them, they're one of my favorites, yeah. and they got a new album dropping, and we're going to review that once it does. But I'm going to treat them the same way. If it's not yeah. up to their standard and it's... I mean, everything I've heard from that release has been fire, so... Yeah, what, I don't bur- expect... Bury My Bones was... Yeah, I don't expect anything legit, else to come yeah. out that's not fantastic. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, I mean, so what? Call me crazy if I, I hold a different standard of depending on what I'm listening to, like... If I come out and listen to something I never heard before and it just blows me away, then I'm gonna give it a five, five out of five. You know. Yeah. But that that was the same thing that I felt about uh, when I listened to the Old Town Road. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you felt. Yeah. You so felt- do you think? Okay, I saw this. We were talking about. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but we were talking about talking about musical conspiracies uh, whenever we started this podcast and about. The Old Town Road music conspiracy, which I don't think we've talked about on here that I'm about to talk about right now. So, yeah. So, are y'all ready? Put your uh, aluminum foil, tin foil hats on, and let's get ready to go down the rabbit hole yeah. together. Hold my hand. Not you. AJ, just America. AJ enlightened me with this gym yeah. once, okay. once the song got popular. So, <sighs> Old Town Road. First of all, let's call it what it is it is marketing genius. 
one hundred percent, one hundred percent viral figured it marketing out. genius. He figured it out, capitalized. Boom! I ain't even mad. Anyway, you can't so, be. Yeah. So for Spotify to count a stream is thirty seconds. You have to have thirty. You can't skip the song before thirty seconds. You can't stop it. If you listen to thirty seconds of the song, the artist gets paid their point zero zero nine cents or whatever it is. Point zero zero nine, point zero zero six, depending on how good of a record label you have to negotiate. Independent people like me, point zero zero six. Bigger people like uh, Taylor Swift or somebody, they're probably getting like point zero zero nine or like point zero one or whatever, whatever it is. Anyway, a bunch of points. Anyway, so 30 seconds. So Old Town Road is very, very short, and it leaves you on the end of the song, doesn't resolve with another um, repeating of the last chorus. Yeah, it only plays, what, three hooks, and there's normally four or yeah. something. So it doesn't play out what you're used to hearing from every other song, so that way you have to go back and listen to it again. And to get to the end of the first chorus, you guessed it. 30, 30 seconds. seconds on the dot. Boom. So now yeah. they got you for two streams instead of for one stream. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, if you're programmed, if if you're programmed to listen to certain types of music with certain amount of formats, certain amount of hooks, I guess, a single format. Yeah. It makes sense to try to put something out there and go viral with it. Yeah. It that kind of uses that format against you. Yeah. They pretty much took... They took the algorithm and algorithmed us. They out algorithmed us. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, they, they got something that was catchy. And they made it stick in your head, and they didn't leave you satisfied. So you have to go back for more. Yes, and just long enough to get another stream out of it. Yeah, uh, myself, the first time I heard it, and probably the first, I don't know, bunch of times that I listened to it. I never listened to it just once. I always listened to it at least twice. This was before I even knew. That I was getting bamboozled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I listened to it a time or two, and then once my kids discovered it, it was over with. Yeah. I was done. I was never going to play that song again. Yeah. Because my kids blew it up. Yeah. I didn't really like it to begin with. It was all right. How many but... times have you listened to the Frozen song? Oh, my God. I can make one of those videos where it's the dad and the daughter singing the song as it comes on the radio. You should do that. I mean, I might the could. podcast. Put it on the podcast page, though, not on your personal page. <laughs> Get that. I'm trying to get these views, man. <laughs> yeah, I have no shame in my game. We're gonna go, gonna go do yeah. some crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. So uh, earlier I was talking about the key of C, and then you rabbit hole into a tangent. Um, so that is actually a thing. The key of C in music is the most popular key for a number one song, possibly well, because you don't have any sharps or flats, which are the black keys on the piano. Yeah. And if you're making very basic music, you probably want to just keep well, it. That, you keep it in the key of C, and what are there's three or four chords that can compro- uh, like that can make up a, a shit ton of songs, too. Yeah, it's pretty much all there the same There was a YouTube thing. video. Oh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use your thing. I saw a YouTube video yeah. once, and uh, the guy it was uh, the three-chord song. They're all, and yeah. he did fucking every popular song that you can imagine, all in yep. one progression. Don't break the, the formula, bro. Yeah, I mean, so if it works. One hundred and twenty beats per minute is also the default on every recording software known to man. Oh, really? So that's possibly also why, because people were like, "Hey, I'm gonna make a song," and then they forgot to change the beats per minute, so now they're just locked into one hundred and twenty. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that's what that's, it was. Yeah, because. You know, when in the 1960s they had recording softwares on their their stuff that default just pigeonholed them into that. Right? <laughs> yeah, they're like it wasn't a it wasn't a conscious thing. Like when Led back. Zeppelin was stealing all their songs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they were all at 120 beats per minute. They I heard were, I heard if you slow down some of the Led Zeppelin songs, it sounds it, like the originals. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Satan speaking to you or something, doesn't it? That you stole all these songs. <laughs> yes. Or is maybe if you play one backwards. It says Hail Satan or something. Oh, really? I thought that was Kiss. Is it Kiss? I don't know. Oh, it was one of those. Probably all of them. But I'm sure there's a musical Where conspiracy. I was going with this conspiracy theory is that um, I'm just making this up. What if they saw the possibilities of, you know, mixing country with rap in Old Town Road and were like old school Billy Ray Cyrus, new school Lil Nas X, and we're like, hey, Let's bring in an old dude like Ozzy Osbourne and put him with Post Malone. 
I feel like that was a hundred percent the intention of Post Malone on that album. He is not yeah. dumb. Yeah. He saw the success of Old Town Road. He said, "I'm going to take a rock icon and I'm going to blend him into a song, and I'm going to make millions of dollars off of it." And I think yeah. he did a good job of doing it. Yeah, I don't know if he said that because I think they made this collab up like years ago, or they discussed it. But a producer somewhere had this in their mind for sure. Producer, this was this was not just on the fly made this happen. This was premeditated to make money. Yeah. Post Malone's like super like legit musician too. Like he did start on. I mean, he would have to be because otherwise he'd be like the dude working at Whataburger that you buy weed from. I don't even know what that means. Like Post Malone, <laughs> if he was not famous, like no one would take him seriously. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, look at him. <laughs> yeah. He's he a worked great at a, artist. He worked at a chicken express in Dallas. Oh, did he? Yeah. I can see that. I, don't know I bet if you went in there, sold weed or not. I bet if you went in there on the drive-through and you ordered a four twenty, he gave you a quarter bag of weed. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> uh, He's yeah. the one that the, uh, the if your daughter ever brings that guy home, you're instantly pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like post Malone before millions of dollars or after millions of dollars? Probably either. Yeah, I feel like before millions of dollars, he probably d- drove like a Scion. You know what I mean? The box. <laughs> no, no, the car. The car <laughs> scion with the with the the uh, trunk scoop on it. Oh, no, I don't know. I anyway, never saw one of never those. Never mind. I'll have to look it up. I'm like, gonna Google maybe it. he could have had no regrets tattooed <laughs> oh, on yeah. him. Not even one. <laughs> Not even one letter. <laughs> Not even a letter. Yeah, dude, he's like a, a legit musician though. Like, oh, plays uh, the guitar no like legitimately and is definitely I, I will an not Aussie fan. Doubt for sure. his musical talent. Yeah. Now his grooming. And dressing talent, <laughs> eh, a little dicey. <laughs> Dude, don't be mad just because you don't got that swag like him, bro. Oh, I mean, is it swag when you wear Crocs and socks? Is that swag? <laughs> I guess. Or is that just not giving a fuck? I mean, which is also somewhat I mean, I'm admirable. About it. I mean, why would you want to? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think we've rambled on enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Episode we've been four. Rambling on in a the bit books. Here. <laughs> Episode four, Sleeper Cuts of Meat, Meat Mecca of the Month. Yes. Which I literally came up with on the fly. I have not I feel come up pretty with proud of any that. creative ideas for this podcast. Well, it's because you're the vocal talent. Everything cool that you hear from us is what Tony has come up with. Even the name. Yeah, dude. But literally you came up every, with the logo. I have the gear. It's a badass logo. <laughs> you got a badass logo. We're the, I got that from Fiverr, probably. No. <laughs> I hope we don't get sued for our logo. I hope we do. We are for sure going to get sued. We're going to get sued for something. I know that. Yeah. But that's how point. you know you made it. Apparently, like you're not a real businessman until your first lawsuit. Boom. Anyway. All right. We'll Y'all see take next care. Time. Episode four. We out. Why do you always end them like when you want me because to Because I feel out? awkward if I don't say something. <laughs> <laughs>